Dr. Anu Singh is a technical writing enthusiast who considers herself as a work in progress towards perfection. She is a PhD in English and loves coding information in words for users. She is currently working as a manager, technical writing at Fizzer in Delhi. Uh, so I am going to talk about minimalism and before that I would like to understand uh, what do you know about minimalism? Have you heard of this term? It's kind of pretty old but I would have want to understand so that you know I know uh, who my audience are and what they expect and what they know so that I can tweak, massage my information for you. It's about minimalism, keeping it minimal, you know, removing every fluff, fluff that I can, I have. So just want to understand. Now, do you know what is minimalism? I'm not testing your knowledge. <laughs> Great. I do have just one hand. Uh, have, have you started, are you using this approach? in your documentation okay okay uh, we have this term this concept minimalism not only in documentation we have adopted we are adopting it you know recently because we we are working in the notion of leading edge documentation we are experimenting with things with information with people artificial intelligence we have you know re we have one session on chatbot and um, are, and a few other you know that is more technology based more pro technology uh, minimalism is basically bringing the attention back to language i'm kind of passionate about language and ensuring you know that through this approach we are actually not talking about you know keeping things bare essential not talking about you know uh, getting rid of uh, jargons getting rid of words that we don't use every day or we want to minimize it, keep, keep it minimal. It's more about, you know, finding the skeleton of information and uh, reaching to a point where you cannot take away anything, you know, uh, from your information uh, or the content that you have drafted. So we'll talk more about it. Uh, these are some of the things that I'm going to cover in my session, what is minimalism? and traditional approach you know we are go also going to talk about principles of minimalism uh, what is minimalism in documentation when uh, we use minim minimalism or what's the idle way or opportunity to, to use it and why minimalism and then the how part you you are aware of majority of it it's just that you you know there are some technical aspect that you can uh, we are going to talk about you can connect once we you know get into the details I'm keeping it uh, very generic minimalism is the idea that less is more and I'll take a pause less is more when it comes to online help when we are talking about help files okay that few bells and whistles is better that good design leads to intuitive natural and instant use it's been said by Legor and she's one of uh, the leading or she's one of the advocates of minimalism and she's doing it more for content uh, this concept has uh, come from John Carroll uh, if you do not know uh, about John Carroll he's uh, one of the leading advocates uh, who came up with the concept of you know minimalism in software design his uh, idea was you know the software has to be intuitive it has to you know let the people the user you know, learn or start doing themselves and the instruction or whatever we are trying to do should not interfere, should not come in between. So that was the concept, that was the very thought of bringing in this concept in software design. And we, you know, we extended further and we are talking about this concept, this approach in documentation. One thing that I would like to highlight here is the paradox of sense making. Uh, John Carroll, he believed that people are situated in a world more real to them than a series of steps. And steps you can consider if it's a quick reference guide, if it's an instruction, you know, an install guide or a procedure doc that you are, you want your users to, you know, uh, follow you, you are instructing them to do something by referring your instruction, your set of information. So, hey, in, in a word, in a word, they are too busy learning to make sense. There's a typo there. My apologies. In a world, uh, they are too busy learning to make much use of the instruction. This is the paradox of sense making. 
uh, when we talk about minimalism, we talk about uh, ripping off the content. And we try to, you know, we are trying to ensure that in, in few words, we are getting the user do the things that we want. But minimalism is not only about, you know, using the minimal word or using few words. It's, it's beyond that. Words, pictures, videos, they could be part of minimalism, part of concept, part of approach. But they are, they are together, they form the approach, but they are just not few words, it's just not minimalism. Principles of minimalism, the four basic principles. Principle one, choose an action-oriented uh, action approach. It has to be task-based. You have to ensure, you have to empower your user to follow your instruction for doing, for getting a task done. They're not here or your instruction is, is not the book or the novel they are reading. They, they are doing something. They are in process of getting a thing done. So your instruction has to be action-oriented. Anchor the tool in the task domain. What does this mean? It means have a context and then have the action or the, uh, the steps that you want the user to complete, tag it to that uh, you know, particular reference. It's more about context sensitive help file. You have a context, it's, you have selected it and then you have pressed F1 and then you are getting help. You know, I'm not talking about the content of context sensitive help files. I'm talking about, you know, the context sensitiveness, the F1 that you press and you get an office assistant tool coming up and asking, it looks like you are writing a letter, how may I help you? So that is, that is how you have to anchor your tool, uh, you have to anchor your task in that domain so that the user know if he's installing, if you know, if he's setting a clock reminder, simplest example, he knows how to do it. You, he does not have to, or the user, uh, I'll be politically correct, not gender biased. The user uh, must know that, you know, these are three things and the reminder will be set. So that is anchoring the tool in the task domain. Support error recognition and recovery. This is, uh, I would consider it the vital aspect, the most important aspect of adopting minimalistic approach, ad adopting are implementing minimalism. Uh, support error recognition and recovery, you know, when, as a user, you are going to make some inevitable errors, you know, something that will, that will happen. The instruction or your document, you know, you have to equip a user for a speedy, you know, recovery from the error that the user has, has committed. You have to make the user comfortable with the error and immediately provide next steps. So that is uh, what this approach has to, you know, provide this approach must do for two users, must help user in this way. <coughs> Support reading to do, study and locate. Again, I mean, uh, when you are your task, when you are focused on your task, you are actually supporting your reader, you are supporting your user to get a thing done. The user is not there to read a book, the user is not there to, you know, enjoy what he's doing in a way that, you know, he's going to retain it, he's going to cherish the memory. He has to install an application and he has to, and the user has to install an application, right? So how you can make information, how you can make the whole process of installation easily accessible, you know, quickly accessible and easy to locate. That's the purpose of, you know, having this approach in place. Any questions? Now what is minimalism in documentation? I will say that uh, reading to do rather than reading to learn, that is minimalism. We are writing not, uh, not a book, not a novel, not a, um, I would say comic strip, not Tindin, right? We are writing a set of instruction that we expect our users to use to get a thing done, be successful with what they are doing, and then move on to the next action. So this is, this is what uh, we want through our set of instruction, irrespective of, you know, whether we are providing them a migration guide, an install guide, a user guide, a help file, a quick reference card, anything that you can think of. You know, 
but the purpose is you are helping them do a thing, you are helping them get, a, get something done. Now minimalism in documentation is an approach where you do not need to document every feature and each aspect of most product. As I say do not document obvious, but there will be times and consider those as exceptions when you have to document obvious because some of the information would fall under uh, the category of value add information that if you provide to your user they will be happy to know about it, they will they'll have a better insight, they will have a better understanding of the product that they are working or the action that they have to do. Users play with the product and discover functions on their own. In this, in this world of uh, technology and you know uh, we are migrating from one platform to the other. If you are an Android user, you have multiple apps. If you are an iOS user, every now and then you have you know, a, a, a notification coming for a you know, platform upgrade from 11.1 to 11.0.2 and 11.2 and things like that. So, and if you are a phone user, when the first time that you bought your cell phone, you did not go back to the you know quick access, quick reference card or the pages or the booklet. You tried to play with the phone yourself, right? You discovered some of the features. You started using a DSLR and you discovered some of the features. It's only when you wanted to explore some of the additional features and functionality of your camera, you went back and then you learned that okay, I can you know, I can play with my lenses, I can do a close focus, I can, you know, get a portrait mode, I can <laughs> get a, a kind of uh, a scenery landscape mode. So that is, that is when you started, you know, you got interested, you started reading more. But it did not happen, you know, at the very beginning. Because as human, we are inquisitive, we want to try things, you know, doing ourselves first. We try to copy and that is how we learn. A child copies, uh, you know, their parent or uh, things that he or she like and then that is how they learn. So, copying is the first step towards learning and minimalism is more about ensuring that we are retaining that very essence of, you know, being inquisitive, being human. And every page is one page or the first page you are going to start and then you are going to you know end and you have to get the thing done in that one particular page. Mark Baker, he is also the writer of this book, Every Page is One Page, where he uh, talks about XML and uh, you know how we can approach minimalism <coughs> for documenting something. But uh, the approach is you know treat, treat every step, treat every page, the first page no left and right the way we do in our template, no left and right concept. Each page has to you know, each page must have a set of instruction that helps a user accomplish a task, that helps a user get an action done, get something completed that you started, you want, you have the intent of getting the user complete. And <coughs> few words on a page improve location or navigation, that too is minimalism. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, location or navigation is not about moving hyperlinking or cross reference, it is about finding the information easily, quickly and you know without breaking you know your mm, attention. It is, it is, it has to be there, you do not have to go to the index, you do not have to you know go to the search and type the word to find information. It has to be so well placed so that you know you can you can look while doing your set of thing your action and find the information you need if it's about uh, entering port or ip address you're not searching ip address you're doing it and it is there on that same page so one page is uh, every page is one page so ip address on that particular page or port number on that particular page is what's going to help you uh, you know ensure that uh, the reader's attention or the user's attention is not broken, it is intact and you are actually helping the user do the task successfully without you know thinking okay I need this information where to find. 
and simple language improves comprehension. There is a myth that minimalism is about using less word and I kind of touched it at the very beginning of this session. Minimalism is finding you know the essence, the essential uh, piece of information that requires to get a task done, to get you know an action completed. So, whether you are using two words, if that is making sense, use the two, those two words. If it requires five words, use those five words. Do not think that okay, these are five words, I have to cut it down you know to three words and it will be making more sense. If it is making more sense, please do it. If it is not, you are good to keep those five words to help the user get the task done without you know thinking, rethinking or thinking through what is coming next or how to get it done. <coughs> when minimalism works best, uh, I would say it is it's not the rule that it is going to work everywhere and you are going to get the same result that you would like to have with the same intent of helping a user you have to be a little selective. When it is more conceptual probably minimalism is not the best way because you need to provide users you know for more information, more understanding. You have to equip the user with information they need to get a task done to understand what they are doing. So, a few things you can add more you know as you work on as you uh, get yourself exposed to uh, this approach as you start reading and writing more about minimalism. It is uh, best when you focus on accomplishing user goals not the product features. We are not talking about what a product can do. Minimalism emphasizes having an overview you know that users need the most. So, it is not cutting down the overview section, but it is more about accomplishing user goals not the product features. <coughs> When your intent is to help user do a task or solve an issue with the right information, right information, right time at the right place. That is navigation, accessibility and you know your approach. When you need quick reminders about how to do something, where something is or what something is for, setting a clock reminder or in you know fixing a, a broken tab some of the common examples, but if you want to get this thing done quickly, you know if writing that get M seal uh, or uh, any adhesive, mix it and then you know put it around the tab, that is a fix, that is what you have to provide to a user to get the thing done. Setting a clock reminder, you know using the knob, rotate it or uh, use the green button, whatever it you know set of instruction takes to get the thing done without letting the user you know or uh, providing the user time to rethink or give a second thought am I hitting the right button is it red it is green it looks like it is amber but I cannot find amber anywhere ok. So, those type of thing uh, must be avoided, but when you have to get something done quickly it is more task oriented quick things minimalism is one of the best approaches I would say. When you need any kind of just in time documentation, quick reference cards, something that you find handy, you know those A4 size, uh, A3 size papers that come with your mobile phone, that is an example, you know you know where to put the socket, where to insert, where to plug in, those are you know those are actually minimalistic approach. It does not mean that it is always about word you can use uh, media, you can use pictures, you can use workflow, these are you know techniques. The approach is minimalistic approach. When you approach an interface to label part GUI or the physical product interface with text. <coughs> the best example that I can think of when I was talking with Radhika on, uh, in the other session, uh, we all have played angry birds in you know some recently or a uh, year back, uh, there is no there is no documentation for that. Call it gamification in documentation, but there is no separate documentation. You know if you touch the screen you know that you have to swipe in this direction, you know that you have to pull the board 
and it is very visual you know it is impacting it is helping you learn you are tra getting trained on using the angry bird uh, application and at the same time you are playing the uh, you know playing the game and you are enjoying and you are you do not feel the need of you know referring to a document to play the game that you want to play. So, that is that is uh, a good example I personally feel that that is one of the good examples of how we can uh, approach we can adopt minimalism in documentation. And when it will not work, when it would fail, when users do not understand big conceptual issues, you are talking about big data, you are talking about artificial intelligence and user and the, the target audience or the user, they have very limited knowledge or they do not know. They do not know that they have to use hashtag to identify, to use an entity to you know determine a class to determine category to identify where exactly the information would go. Minimalism would not work. You know, you need flesh, you need, uh, you know, fat on the skeleton for those users. You know, because 206 bones, we all know that we have in our body. But what if user comes? I have a broken bone. Are we going to tell? Okay, so you have 207 bones in your body now. No we cannot tell any user that you have 207 bones. Similarly, if it is a big conceptual, you know, if it is about concept, if it is about, you know, what is the, what is the skeleton, what is the core of the information, you cannot compromise. It has to, you know, go without this approach. When the product is an invention, when you are using it for the first time, you as a technical writer, your target audience as your readers, they do not know what they have, you know, what they are going to play with. They have, they do not have any memory of using something similar, using similar type of, you know, product or information. It's, it's Graham Bell. People did not know that they have to say over or they have to call themselves Charlie calling or Roger, right? That, those moments or those instances, you have to have a documentation that tells the user that okay if you are calling you have to you know use the code word you have to use the letter okay see it is charlie charlie calling once you are done over so that you kind of put a stop you put a punctuation and the message is transmitted and the receiver would know that okay you have no additional information or no additional you know message to convey so those uh, you know those type of scenario or in those situation this approach would not work when writing for a diverse audience but no option for multiple documents why this is a little difficult and tricky part uh, when we say diverse audience it, it is more about understanding the culture you know those communication barriers that you might have read or heard you know somewhere uh, in one of your trainings or when you are yourself documenting and identifying your target audience, those communication barriers come into picture. You are somebody who is, uh, who is not, you know, in the same re uh, region or who is coming from a different culture, might not understand. You are not adding, you know, a task to the domain, you are not providing the context, you are not providing the environment for the user to identify, right. So, that is when this approach would not work because they they would not know they would they would go you know they would be clueless they would not understand what they have to do how they have to do or what are they talking about how to fix uh, fix a, a leaking tab they would not know that you know what what is a tab unless you tell them that okay this is uh, similar to knob you can use it if you are in Italy you can use it for you know taking out filling your glass with beer if you are in India it is water you know but <laughs> things like that. So, you have to provide them the concept and concept would cannot be you know uh, the bare essential it has to be you know the essential information it has to be value add information and it has to have some information from what we call junk drawer though it does not have any real you know value it does not have any real significance, but it gives comfort to your audience, right. They, they feel better 
they feel more comfortable that okay I have some I know what I have to do I have some background now I can correlate I can identify so this is uh, when writers use the concept of writing few words using bulleted or numbered list rem removing value add information putting everything in a table list is you know it, it's it's a long list minimalism is not just about reorganizing your content changing the layout you know getting rid of you know extra words fluff as we call jargons it's not minimalism you have to ensure you are retaining you know you are retaining the information that's very much required take a reference of estimation that you're doing you know if you need 100 hours to complete a documentation you need 100 hours if you are an experience you would be able to do it in 100 hours if you are a newbie if you are you know uh, new in the technical writing domain it could be 120 hours but it cannot be less than 100 hours so that's the that's the essence that's the understanding we must have when we are using this in our documentation now why minimalism and I have kind of talked about it I have touched a few things minimalism is more than removing flop unnecessarily overly complex words repetitions pompous or unnecessarily formal writing or vague writing balances information by providing quick access to right information that is easy to understand right information and easy to understand these two things form the basis form the you know essence of this approach users want to get their job done than knowing the system and need help in troubleshooting a problem on inevitable errors they make they want to get a thing done <coughs> if they entered instead of 1056 if they entered 1057 that's human error how quickly they can correct it that's when your you know your documentation this approach would come into picture okay you can reset it reset you know type or hit reset button and then re-enter that's what that's the beauty of you know this approach that's the beauty of uh, adopting minimalism and implementing it and cost benefits can you think of cost benefits now that we have talked so much very good what else would come under cost benefit? Wonderful. Support uh, and replacements for products of any. Uh, do you mean support call, helpline number? Uh, support call in the sense if, that if a call agent or so it is a support person, mm -hmm. whatever time uh, the person has to spend uh, you know, giving support because the person is, uh, the user does not understand the instruction. Right. That is going to be that could be saved. And uh -huh. uh, further aspect could be if there is something with regards to like the person just doesn't understand the instruction, so the person wants to replace some. Mm -hmm. So that will be an overall cost saving. Bullseye. Very good. Uh, all of you are very accurate. Cost benefit in terms of you know cost you will save on translation. We are evolving, we are in a global world. We have to cater English speakers we have to cater Spanish speakers we have to cater you know multilingual people so their translation is about each word so if you are you know expressing if you are providing information in six words instead of 12 words you are actually saving some dollars in those six words that you have saved right uh, <coughs> then resource utilization if you you know using this approach it's you are actually helping uh, you know it's easy to maintain your documentation set you, it's you know uh, you do not have to worry about too many documentation five minutes please too many documentation uh, and too many you know uh, I would say eagerness or you know need uh, to ensure that everything is updated we have uh, all the set of instruction everywhere in place so that too is one of the benefits you can use your resources you can use your writers and assign them to new projects and they can you know utilize the time that you have saved there and work on additional projects 
again impact on user experience with all these especially cost benefit and ease of understanding access they're going to be really happy so structured information that explains task you know you have to you know what you have to do and how you have to do ease of navigation it's easy to you know access the information you want inclusion of overviews that user really need is again you know something that must have and we kind of neglect it more often procedure in task order what you have to accomplish first and that's how you sequence it and pictorial clarity with flow charts images and video that's what we ha we have talked about so i'll skip and the how part it's kind of you have been doing it the essence is you know do not include the obvious that we have talked get consistent you have to you know adopt a consistent approach embrace efficiency in terms of using information get on the grid think like a user what is the essential what's the value add what's the jargon or the junk drawer that you can skip get functional think think for action oriented think what you have to do find your balance it could be a picture you know that will serve the purpose it could be a flow chart that would serve the purpose it could be a live video streaming that could serve the purpose so find the balance it you know white space is all right space that too is what you can consider here break some rule you know get innovative think what all you can do and explore your options in terms of finding your audience in terms of finding another way or an of saying or getting thing done but ensure that you are just letting the user know just one way of getting a task done there is no nothing like or you know select this or select that select this and then the second step so uh this is mostly the how part and again you have to practice it if you have if you actually want to adopt this and coming close we have talked a lot about Uh, minimalism this is a quiz for all of you select the most appropriate instruction for technical documentation click okay your changes are saved and consider asking you know consider asking how long the changes are going to be saved this is one question that we do not ask it's saved forever it's saved you know for this session it's saved until i upgrade to a new version do ask this question whether you are adopting this approach or not and give me an answer click okay the next time you log out and log back in again the original settings are restored click okay your changes are saved until you log out and log back in again click okay your changes are saved until you log out click okay your changes are saved until the end of the current session I heard four. One. One. Okay. I would say all are correct. I am making it easy. All are correct, but you have to find the best way of saying something. So the best way, you could again find a better way of you know from what I have listed as best. click okay your changes are saved until the end of the current session there's lot of word you know we talked about cost benefit if i have to translate it i have to pay extra dollar right second again it's log out log back in again that's kind of confusing right it's not just one task i'm talking about your changes are saved until you log out i can you know i do not know whether my ses my session will expire i can continue remain you know i can continue i can decide to stay on the same page and my session will continue right so the last one is why is the best option and before i move uh, these are the references that i have referred to to come up with this presentation and session um this will be available so you can always you know browse and uh, find more here and before i conclude on a thank you note any last minute question i know we are out of time but i would definitely like to 
you know, answer a few questions that I can take up. I believe in, yes. Uh, I have this one question. Uh, you said that we need to understand uh, what is what is minimal and what is required, or we do not have to uh, describe each and every feature when we are writing about a product. Right. So, what should be the criteria to decide that uh, this is uh, this is not required right now? We should go and describe only this feature because uh, if it if it is in the initial stages, you don't know what your audience is going to be whether the audience is actually going to be aware of something because this is something which I have experienced with regards to a new mobile phone which uh, which I bought for my father. Mm -hmm. uh, it had very minimal thing that this is the charger this, 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 this and some features we were just not able to understand how to go about it. So, when you say that we, we, we know, need not describe everything, how to decide that? Uh, there are two aspects. First, you have to consider an overview in this uh, in this scenario because it's a new product. Mm. So you have to provide you know all the information for a user to be comfortable with your product. We have launched a product with mi minimal or bare essential or providing skeleton you know to that user would not help. So this understanding what's relevant, what's not relevant, you can categorize your information. You have to do some research. You have to categorize your information as essential. I mean, you have to provide this information. Value add, you can consider it more for your online help. You know, any additional insight that you can provide to your user, any troubleshooting tip that you can provide to your user. You have to consider anything that you are thinking of, you know, adding to Node would not work because people or users would not, you know, they don't care about nodes or, you know, anything that you add on later. So everything has to be part of the mainstream documentation okay and then some of the things you can always you know add it to uh, add it as an appendix you know for for your reader to for your user to you know refer to when they want to read uh, but when when we are talking about mainstream documentation or uh, adopting this approach it's not going to be very effective you know when the product is when the product is new okay for new users minimalism would work when they have the overview, you know, when they have gone through overview, when they have additional information, then it's going to be very easy for them to understand. Coming to, you know, how we can categorize it, you have to, you know, identify and work with your SME that we need this set of information. And this is, you know, required for your existing user, your new user, or somebody who is doing it, you know, for just one of cases. Okay. And then value add, especially for those who are new and doing it for one of cases and you know junk you can always add as much as you can but that will not be relevant you can always have it as add on documentation or you know value add documentation for new users so user experience research could be utilized over here definitely yes user experience could utilize uh, in mid 1980s you know there was this set of people who were more focused on uh, getting the job done basis the selection of you know what user has done and uh, that is when this user experience came into play she's also the honorary recipient of distinguished chapter service award huge round of applause for dr anu singh please thank you it was a wonderful session indeed